What's going on everyone? I'm the OP Jellicent, and today I'm team building around one of my favorite sets to use in competitive Pokemon, which is Choice Band Hippowdon. I would spam this a lot last gen with like Jirachi, Tornadus, and Volturn, and it would actually catch a lot of people off guard, so I want to try it again, and I once again want to go for Volturn, and the Volt Switcher I'm going to use is Rotom Mo. The reason being, it allows you to play a lot safer with Hippowdon. Say for example, you get the prediction wrong, they're able to pivot in like Seismitoad, or Rotom Wash. We still have Rotom Mo right here as the safe switch in. Even though like Volt Switch or Toxic could be kind of annoying, it's still our best bet. So let's go ahead and roll with it with N Volt Switch and Nasty Plot Breaker. Nasty Plot can also break down Pokemon like Sylveon, which is kind of useful. I don't think we can 2-hit KO that unless we're spamming Earthquake, which they can just wish and then pass it out. So that's kind of good. And then I can run, obviously, Leaf Storm and Willow will spawn this. Thunder Wave could be good, but honestly, like, the speed control for Hippo is not that useful. The idea is we use the bulk to naturally take one hit and then just blow something away. I'll make this Leftovers, obviously. That's what I love about Rotom Mo. You don't have to run Heavy Duty Boots like on Rotom Heat. It feels a lot less restricting, if I'm being honest. Let's go ahead and run Timid Nature. That did not put the nature in. There we go, with the 4 in Special Attack, and... Looks good so far, so I definitely need a... Well, because I have Offensive Hippowdon, like, Mold Breaker Drill is going to be a really big issue. Because that's also able to break through my Rotom's Levitate. And Hippowdon will get to it KO'd, I believe. Or O-Code after a Swords Dance. So what can I do to check that? Mock Punch can Kelder Priority definitely is an option. What else is there for, for Mold Breaker Drill? I could add Corviknight and just get my Defogger on the board right away. It would also complete my Volturn core, which I'm not gonna lie, seems really strong. But what would Conkeldar provide for me? It would provide me with another physical breaker. Maybe I don't need that, but like the priority does seem really valuable, if I'm being honest. Oh, also for Mamoswine, I didn't realize we didn't have an ice, like both of these are weak to ice types, so the Mach Punch into opposing Mamo could be really valuable. Dalgo Conk, just for because it's able to offensively check the two biggest threats to these two, so might as well have it. I'll put enough speed for Bulky Sylveon, which is a 124 speed. Bulky Sylveon, as you can see, reaches 156, so we got the 157 right here. Then I can make it 132 HP with Facade, which is able to 2 hit KO Sylveon, so as long as they don't put a bit of speed to speed creep up this Conkeldred spread, we should be fine. Then I can put, like, Drain Punch. Well, I'll put Mach Punch first. Drain Punch and Earthquake to be able to hit Dragapult. With the flame orb, I want my nature on here too. That's going to be adamant nature. Great, so now we have a lot of offense going on the team. Rotom is sort of a defensive pivot though, if I'm being honest now. What do I need from here? Rotom heat looks kind of annoying, if I'm being honest. Like, Conkeldur is going to take a lot of damage from overheat, and then like these don't appreciate overheat or will -Wisp, so that's something I want to consider. Sandrush drill could be an issue too. I do have the Mach Punch priority, but like... I might be pressured by like Cloyster or something with Conk, so maybe I don't want to rely on it. I don't really see a lot of sand plus screens though, so maybe I don't have to worry about that. I mean, if I'm super worried, I could just add like Scarf Guard to like trace the sand rush, but I don't know if I want to do that. It would be fun though, like it would also provide me with a Hydreigon check. Also a Draco switch in or Dragon Dart switch in, so maybe that could be the play. I should probably just go with the more, like, better fairy, like Clef, but Scarf Gardevoir could be good speed control. Hmm, what do I want to do? I think I'm just gonna go with the Scarf Guard, like, I think I've convinced myself of that. The speed control is gonna be good for late game cleaning, and then, like, Hippowdon can pressure Age Slash, which can open up the door for Scarf Guard as well, so that'll be able to help me out. Let's go ahead and make it Moonblast. Let me make sure I put Trace on here, since that's kind of the whole idea. It also gives me a better rain check, which is actually going to be valuable, because, like, Rotom's my water resist right now, and it doesn't take heads well from, like, Barascuta after a liquidation, so... Being able to revenge with Choice Guard of Gardevoir is going to be very useful. I'll make a dual stab with, I think, Focus Blast and Thunderbolt on the set right here. Focus Blast is a horrible move, but I need it for Ferrothorn, so... Might as well have it. I'd like to build teams to where, like, everything can open up the door for something else, so... For example, right here, everything has ways to hit Ferrothorn, so... If I can get rid of it, Rotom Mo can have a lot more fun. Let's go ahead and make this Timid Nature. With the 4 and Spideff, so that's great. We have no Hazard game on the team yet, I'm realizing. Because my Hippowdon is not a Stealth Rock setter, it's 4 attacks, so... That's something I really need to keep in mind here. What do I want to patch that up with? 
I could still honestly just add Corvenet on the team. Corvenet is spellashable on like most bulky offense teams. It would provide me with a better drill switch in because like I still don't switch into Moldbreaker drill. I have the mock punch to check it and Scar Focus Blast. This can naturally take a one before an SD, but Corvenet might need to be the play just to be able to switch in Sponge and Earthquake wear down with Brave Bird and whatnot. So is that what I want to opt for here? That would provide me my defogger. That would force the last mon to be a stealth rocker. Which I don't actually know what I would use because this team doesn't really want Sash to drill. It's not that offensive. I will be use utilizing pivots on this team. What would Doug Trio trap for me that could help this team out? I guess like trapping Cinderace is actually really good because Hippowdon doesn't switch in due to the fact that I have offensive Hippowdon. So Corviknight plus Doug Trio could just round out this team right here. Are there any rockers in UU that I could try? So that would be ground spam. I could do ground spam with my own Mammo and then like threaten out Hydreigon using Ice Shard. Hydreigon's another big threat, like having the double priority plus choice guard of Gardevoir would really shut it down, so that could be the way to go as well. I think I'll go Corviknight, then I'll de like decide between Dugtrio and Mammo Swine. Let's go U-turn, Defog, Roost, Brave Bird. With leftovers, obviously. I'll leave pressure on there because it's good against rocks spamming seismitoads. We'll put 80 in HP, well, 80 in defense, and then 176 in spadef with the minus special attack nature. And I think I want to use a ground spam with another ground type attacker for the last mon. So, Dougie or Mammo? The priority is going to be so good. But Sash Dougie is so strong as well. The thing is, like, if I'm trapping, then I won't get up rocks every game. How worried am I about Cinderace? I can revenge it using Gardevoir. Hip Howdon, I can bring in after sacking somebody else, and then I can pressure using this, so... I think the Mammo priority is going to be a lot more valuable. Also, I can utilize Thick Fat to help out against Cloyster, so that'll help me out. Then what I can do is run Stealth Rocks, Earthquake, Icicle Crash, and... I shared obviously, so that'll be the team, I believe. So ground spam should be fun if the team doesn't have a ground weakness, or if the opposing team doesn't have a ground immunity, then these two are going to have a lot of fun. We can also watch out for, like, no fairy resist, so that's something I can consider. And then, like I mentioned, a lot of this team has ways to wear down Ferrothorn, which is going to open up the door for Rotom Mo breaking potential. So let me finish out the EVs on this, and then that should be all good. Let me make sure it's adamant. Abilities are correct, right? Thick Fat, Pressure, Trace, Guts, Levitate, Sand Stream. Do I want to run Sand Force? I mean, like, a lot of my team kind of cares about Sand chipping them down, but I think the Sand damage on opposing teams is going to be valuable for Scarf, Gardevoir, Wincon. So I'll just keep it on there for now, and yeah, let's go ahead and play. Okay, I have a game right here against Vulcanian is good. I've battled this player a lot. It appears as though he's using Sticky Webs plus maybe Mew Lead. It could also just be like Sticky Webs and then like Nasty Plot Mew alongside that, but what do I think my best lead is going to be? I like Gardevoir a lot, but if it's T-Wave into Sticky Webs, that would definitely be frustrating. I'm going to go with Mammo instead. So I think this is just a lead Mew then. So I'm going to go for Earthquake. I think he would go for Taunt initially. Although if I was oblivious, he couldn't taunt me, so maybe he won't. Yeah. I do 68. Ideally, I get red carded into... Oh, I didn't get red carded. Might only be for contact moves. Let's just go for Crash here. And kill that off. Nice. So I take two Life Orb hits. I wonder who they bring out now. Ends up being Gengar. I think this has to Focus Blast to kill me, but... I mean, Specs Shadow Ball probably does as well. I don't really know if I want to switch out. That's the thing. Like, I feel like switching around with all these hazards up is just not a good idea. Maybe the better play is just a sack, and then I can get another Gardevoir or Hippo. Yeah, that seems fine. Let's just go right for Earthquake. I'm assuming this is Specs, right? Oh, it wasn't. Wow. It's Life Orb, and I was able to live that. Okay. That's actually really big. I definitely want to keep my Conkeldur. It's my best Hydreigon check and my Bisharp check left. My best Pokemon to bring in right now is, I think, the... I think the Gardevoir is okay, but... Like, if Aegislash comes in, I don't want to give it set up, so let's go Hippo. It's a big Vekavolt. I don't know how fast this is, but if I outspeed here and get a Stone Edge off, I might Oko it. I am faster. It is Sash, but it's going to die to Sand. Okay, that's helpful. Now he's going to bring out the Hydreigon. Okay, so I think I, do I can just go Hard Gardevoir on this, perhaps. I mean, I'll get to it KO'd. The other play is Corviknight. Let's do Corviknight. 
Ends up going for Dark Pulse. This probably has a fire move, but if it doesn't and I get the defog off, I basically win. I got the defog off. Okay, I think I'm good now. He went for the flinch, clearly, but... Yeah, now I can just U-turn. I think that was a risky play because he could have gotten Defiant, but at the same time, Conkeldur Mach Punch can still check it, and I can take a Sucker Punch anytime, so... I don't think it was that big of a risk. What I can do here is bring in... Let's go Gardevoir. And let's just go right for Moonblast, I want to say. Heart switches in Aegislash and gets dropped, okay. Well, what I'll do here is bring in Hippo, obviously. I don't know if this is Swords Dance or whatnot, but he ends up doubling in the Hydreigon. So I think I just go back to guard. It is Life Orb, right? So yeah, I'll go guard here, keep that healthy, and this time I think I'll just Moonblast again. There's really no drawback to it. If the Aegislash comes in, I'm pretty sure Hippo can come in. I really don't want to lose to Bisharp, that's the thing. So I Moonblast here, assuming he sacks and then goes Aegislash, what would I do? Probably hard Rotom at that point. Eh, maybe not. Okay, let's just let's just Moonblast here. He goes hard Bisharp, okay. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't think that would be the play, but I can't use Hippo to check this. I'm just gonna go for the Rotom switch. As Iron Head comes out, and now I can just Volt Switch out. I should live Sucker Punch, I wanna say. He didn't even go for that. And what I can do now is bring in Conk, I think. Conk, get the Flame Orb, and then I should be able to just win it with Conk. Like, there's no way Aegislash Oko's me unless it Iron Head flinches. So let's go for Earthquake. Yeah, and then I can just Mach Punch the Hydreigon. Nice, okay. We got this. Scary start, but I definitely think we played it well. I wonder where I am on the ladder. I don't think it's going to say it here because it takes a while to update during the middle of the day, but where was I right there? 1771. I don't know how many points I would get from this, but I'll be right back. So I have another game right here. Welcome back, Wolfpack. Okay. This guy has a no fairy resist, so I can definitely go for an endgame with my Gardevoir. If I want to beat Cloyster, I gotta keep Conkeldur, but that's assuming I don't get King's Rock flinched by Ice Shard over and over again. What I want to do here is lead Hippo. I was hoping to see Grimmsnarl, and what I could do is Bandit Earthquake it. I don't know what this is trying to do, but I'm just gonna Earthquake. Like, I don't think you're going Togekiss. This is getting Oko'd, I think. 89, never mind. Well, he knows I'm choice banned, but I'm still just gonna Earthquake. Eh, I mean, I could easily just double out, but... Like, Corviknight wouldn't be a bad switch either. Just EQ. Okay, so he leaves it in. I wonder who comes in now. Ends up being Togekiss. I think I go Corviknight or Mamo? Like, probably Mamo. No, Mamo looks really strong. Let's go Corviknight. On sub. It's a Brave Bird here. Ideally, he doesn't air slash flinch me all the way down from full. I just need one Brave Bird into this. He should go for air slash here, I feel, because one air slash will put me in range of Flamethrower following up, but... He just goes for Flamethrower again, which I can take. I will die to Recoil, but honestly, Togekiss being out of the way, or at least heavily weakened, really helps me out here. What I want to do is go Rotom, and just go right for Volt. He does make the doggy play. Good play, I guess, but I can still Wisp into, like, Leaf Storm, so I'm not too worried. Uh, never mind, he's going to get to keep the Sash. That's actually really frustrating, I'm not gonna lie. And then he Mementos out of there to set up with the Cloister? Like, what, what's happening here? Nasty Plot Hydreigon? I can beat Hydreigon with Conkeldur plus Gardevoir, but I guess, like... So in hindsight, the Willow's miss didn't matter because he probably would have Mementoed anyway, but what I can do here is Volt out. I don't know what he's trying to do. He goes for the screen. Did I nasty plot? Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and volt switch and bring out... I'm going to go back to Bandit Hippo. Ends up creating a spirit break, which is a bit frustrating, I'm not going to lie, but... I mean, I'll stone edge here, I think. He just goes for the reflect, and I'm still missing. <laughs> well, actually, I didn't miss the other turn. I clicked nasty plot. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. Just stand. I get a crit? Okay, so we crit through the screen. Which is helpful. I think the... If I hit the other one, the next one might have killed. But yeah, now he has to go like... Cloister. But Cloister can't do anything here because its Sash is going to get broken by Sand. Then I just check it using... Either Conk or like... Yeah, Conk. It's really just that. <laughs> yeah, I think I have this using Conk and then like I can just clean up with Scarf Gardevoir after, I believe. That seems to be the scenario here. They end up bringing out Hydreigon now. I don't know what this is trying to do, but I think I go Gardevoir. 
goes for Dark Pulse and it does a really good amount, but I can Moonblast here. It'll kill this behind the screen and then Togekiss should get to it KO'd. So there's that. Togekiss can come in now, I guess. But then, like, there's no way I lose because I think I just go Mammo after and I shard through it. They end up bringing out the Cloister, so I'm assuming they're trying to maybe Ice Shard here? No, they're not. They go for the Shell Smash. I don't think that's going to help you, dude. Should I keep this? I mean, there's really no reason for me to not to keep it and just go Hippo. Yeah, let's just do this, then bring in Conk. They have to go for the Ice Shard and hope they flinch me, I think. I think this is King's Rock. It wasn't Sash, I think, because why would you run Sash on screens? And it wasn't White Herb, so it should be King's Rock. I think they're debating whether they want to switch out, but that's still not going to help them. They didn't even go for Ice Shard. So yeah, now it's over because their screens are gone and I have my Scarf Gardevoir, as well as Ice Shard, so... Yeah, I can Facade here. It looks like... what happened? Did they forfeit after that? Yeah, they forfeit, I'm assuming. I'll be right back. So we have even more offense now. I switched around the move slots on my Rotom because I think I'm used to Volt Switch being at the front, which is why I clicked it there, but what I want to do here is... They're really weak to Mamoswine too. Mamoswine looks great. So does Hippo. Like the ground spam just looks great right here. They have one immunity and like the immunities don't really switch into either of my ground types if I predict correctly. So maybe I can take advantage of that. I'm going to lead Gardevoir here against the Hydreigon. I think Moonblast is just safe. If they're Scarf, they'll go for U-turn. But on this sort of teams, I'd, a team, you would probably be like a nasty plot behind screens. So they end up switching an Aegislash. I'd have to drop this one too, or special attack drop. It feels like Moonblast has such a higher chance when it really doesn't. I'll go to this on Flash Cannon. I don't know what they were hoping I switched in, but... What I can do here is maybe just throw off a Brave Bird. I don't know if they have like King Shield or whatnot, but... Like it doesn't really matter to me. I think I win this exchange. So here's where things get a bit tough. I'm just gonna call the Boom Burst. There's no way you don't go for Boom Burst. Yeah, and I'm not risking a ground type here. Like, those are way too good. I know that was really risky, but I knew they were going to boom burst every time. And now what I can do is bring out... Life Orb. Would they be timid Life Orb? Is that a thing people will run? I don't, I don't think so. I'm just going to go to Mamoswine and hope... If they're timid boom burst, I'm going to be so sad. But there's no way they're timid. Like, who runs that? They end up heart switching in Cloyster, and I missed. Okay, that's an interesting turn. <laughs> For sure. I think what I want to do here is just Earthquake. I would have been able to Earthquake after I knock it out, maybe. Ah, eh, probably not. Cloister's Fizzed Up is really strong, but... Worst case, what I can do is try to revenge it using Conk. But yeah, definitely uh, kind of a horrible miss, but I did get the special attack drop. They might have Flash Cannon anyway, though. Actually, why didn't they Shadow Ball now that I'm looking back at that? They're the same power, but I don't have a Ghost Immunity. Yeah, I don't know why they flash cannoned, but hitting that would have been really helpful. I just don't want the shell smashing here with the focus sash up. That's like the way I lose, so let's quick through it. I'm assuming they shell smashed. Yep. And I think if I want to go about this correctly, I sack Corviknight, then go Conk. They have to attack. Like, there's no other play. Oh, they're special. Okay, that's interesting. As much as I want to be aggressive when I bring out Conk, I have to mock punch. There's no other option here. Like, I would totally go for Earthquake here, but if they stay in, I just lose. I'm going to try to bait them to stay in by making them think that I'm thinking, so let's just wait a bit. So, assuming they do switch out, what plays would I make then? If they go out into one of the ghost types, I could pivot Hippo or Mamo again. Age Slush coming in would be so bad. I'm just going to Mach Punch now. Okay, they still haven't selected, so they're thinking about it too. I want them to select it before me here. Let's see... Would they switch out? I mean, I'm going to mock Punch no matter what, I think, but... I'm just trying to envision the scenario if they do switch out. Let's mock Punch. Ah, they did make the switch, okay. Wait, is this even fast enough? I don't think it's fast enough for me. I'm pretty invested on this thing. Oh, never mind, it should be. But I think at this point I stay and take the hit and take the kill, and then try to go for an endgame with Scarf Guard. That seems to be my best option here. I should live this, and then... Oh, Steel Beam. <laughs> So it's Specs, I think? That's really interesting. I can go Mammo here. And I'm gonna try to... Well, they're just gonna sack off the Broken Chains, but I'll, I'll just Earthquake. There's no way you go Hydreigon. Oh, they give me that, okay. I think Gardevoir can do this, because I have damage on Tuxter City too. 
Gardevoir looks promising. Especially if they give me the screen setter now. I'm going to try to get up rocks. I did get up rocks. Nice. So that chips down toxicity even more. What are they going for an endgame with is what my question is. I mean, yeah, I can just attack again. It could be worth it to pivot to Rotom here. No, let's just attack. Okay, they'd knock me out. That's fine. I can go to Rotom here and... Actually, Rotom might solo on its own. Let's go for Volt. They're obviously just going to give me this. And then, don't I just bring out Guard here and, like, mess something up? I mean, I guess they could go Runer, I guess, and then I could just bring out Rotom again. Like, that would be okay. I guess if they double to Hydreigon, though, that's really bad. Yeah, I think I've set up Guard, but it depends on... Depends on a few things. First of all, what play they make here. They might even just use Cloyster as Sack Fodder, but no, they go Runer, I guess. Oh, I lose my Trace. Okay, let's go Rotom. On the rocks. Okay, interesting. I think I can maybe Wisp. Yeah, let's go for the burn. They end up hard switching on Toxtricity. I think Moonblast can do this. Uh, right here, though, like, <laughs> this is a tough turn. I don't- Leaf Storm's not gonna kill, I don't believe. But it still might be the play. Like, the other play is going Hippo, but, like, I would be losing the Hippo in that scenario. Yeah, I'll just Leaf Storm. Yeah, I didn't- Oh, wait, what did they do? They shift geared. Who knows why, but... I don't- I think they should have just Sludge Grave. Why did they do that? So now if Hydreigon comes in, it depends on whether it's sub or not. That's a factor. I think I take the Slow Volt. No, I think I go Hard Hippo. Or hard guard. Like, those are both good plays, but... Like, this just wins. It beats the runer, I guess. Whereas Hippo, I don't think does, so... I guess I'll go Hippo. It goes for a nasty plot. As long as it doesn't go for sub, which is, like, the big thing here, I should be able to win, so... Let's spam Stone Edge. They just kill me. That's perfect. I can just go Gardevoir now and Moonblast. And I don't think they have great plays against this. Like, I don't know how well Runerugus takes this hit. That's the thing. And also, if they double out into Hydreigon when it comes in, that's just really bad. They left it in. I think they choked. Yeah, I think I just straight up win with Rotom now, no matter what. Because I should live an Ice Shard from that thing. So here's Runerugus. I just Moonblast it and then try to clean up with Rotom, I think. That's actually doing a decent amount. And this this dies. No way. Yeah, this is dead. <laughs> I can just Moonblast through it as well. Especially because it take it, it's not taking hazards, but even at minus two, Cloyster is so bad. Yeah, it's still gonna drop to Moonblast, so I'll be right back. I've gotten like 40 points for these three wins. I started off at like 1780, and now I'm at 1820, so I'm hoping if I continue to win, we can get a few more, but this guy has no ground immunity. Okay, I definitely want to take advantage of that. I'm gonna lead off with my Rotom. On the Jellicent, would they go hard digs? Definitely not. Why would you go from one grass week to the other? That makes very little sense. I'll just Volt. As they end up pivoting into Ditto, which makes plenty of sense here. It's definitely going to be Scarf. I can bring out Conk, and maybe what I can do is just go right for Earthquake. They're just going to Volt, I feel. I guess they could Leaf Storm, so I'll just pivot back to my own Rotom. Yeah, I think that's the safer way to go about this. They can bring out, like, Hatterene now if they want, but... I'm not really concerned. Like, they can go Arc Dissolve too. What does Arc Dissolve do? Like, is it Scarf? How good is its attack stat? Is it a special attacker? Okay, 100 attack, 90 special attack. Ends up being Hatterene. I definitely want to find out if this is Assault Vest. So let's go for Volt here. 28 means it's not AV. I can go Corviknight. Ends up going for Trick Room. Okay, I don't know why I didn't realize this was not- This was just a Trick Room team earlier, but... I'll go right for U-Turn. As they try to get in the Arc result. This is where like having slow on slow have hot on would be a lot better, but uh this thing mins out at what 103? I don't think it can kill my Mammo in one hit. I'm just gonna go Mammo. And its defense is like bad, right? So I can earthquake. I don't think they can stop my Mammo here. Like it should be getting a kill. I guess they could pivot to like Jellicent, but I think they would want to keep that for the water spout pressure. So like who knows what they want to do? Low kick. No idea I'd got that. <laughs> that's the thing. Like, I don't know what these Pokemon do, so. That's gonna make this really tough. Uh, no fairy resist, I just realized. I should probably try to go just chip stuff down for guard at this point. Let's go ahead and bring out Conk. 
Probably what I should have done earlier. And I'm just gonna Earthquake, like, trying to catch Jellicent. Yeah. I can do this, and then, like... It doesn't even do it KO, which is kind of sad, but... I can still just Earthquake again. Strength Sap, okay. Yeah, this might be an L. Like, I definitely messed up with my ammo right there. I thought it was safe, and then they busted out Low Kick, which... I could have just looked up its moveset, to be fair, so maybe my fault. They got up TR again. Okay, what I'm gonna do is just Nasty Plot and go for a kill. Well, is it even worth the Nasty Plotting under terrain? That seems really careless. I'm just gonna do it. They went hard Arc Result. I was really hoping they would do anything but this. I could try to live here and maybe, like, Leaf Storm. Th I'm just gonna do it. Like, whatever. Maybe I live one. Get two hits, dude. Come on. Three. Three is the average. And I knocked them out. Okay. That was scary. I probably would have lost right there if that ended up getting four hits, but... I mean, like, three is average, so I don't really think there's much room to complain. They're gonna Mystical Fire, but I'm still gonna get in Corviknight. Uh, they crit it, which is annoying. Just don't crit this one, though, and, like, maybe it'll be okay. <laughs> because Corviknight, like, walls a lot of things, like Mimikyu, Diggersby. So I can just roost stall this Trick Room out. I mean, they're gonna Trick Room here, right? Maybe I can U-turn into Hippo. Yeah, they trick room, but they can't kill me, so I can just abandon Earthquake now and do some work. Oh, this is dead, dude. You're, you're messing up. Never mind. Jeez. Hatterene, it's not that serious. I'm just gonna Earthquake again. I should live anything, and then yeah, I can Earthquake to kill it. That's helpful. I don't know. Can Mimikyu underspeed me? 177? I'm 174, so... I'm always slower than Mimikyu. Diggersby can underspeed me. This definitely underspeeds me, so let's go to Rotom. Goes for will -Wisp, so they wasted their own Trick Room turn right there, which is actually really strong for me here. What I can do this turn is bring out... I think Guard, and maybe just spamming Moonblast is, like, my best option. Because this way they can't Strength Sap stall me. Yeah, so let's go right for Moonblast, see how much I'm doing. Ideally, I can win this exchange, but I'm honestly unsure. <laughs> but, like, I really don't want to invite in Diggersby, especially if it has, like, Fire Punch. Because that's, like, a, some tech it could use to break through Corviknight, but... Yeah, the fact that I can still win this despite how I played my Mamo is kind of surprising to me. I thought it was over. Oh, they give me the Skies. Okay, that's an interesting decision. And it actually red cards me into Corviknight, which is what I wanted to hard switch in the next turn, so that's perfect. I can Brave Bird now. Okay, they do 14. I'm gonna U-turn this time. Maybe I should just roost. Yeah, let's just roost. As they go digs, I don't know what digs has for me. Like, Wild Charge and Fire Punch are the two moves. Thunder Punch, but that doesn't do too much. And, like, I think they would be locked into that. So I'm going to go Hippo here and try to claim. Uh, it's only did 46, so maybe it's not. But I'll go for Earthquake. It's banded. It'll do some damage to anything. I think they're locked in. Like, 46 isn't banded, but it wouldn't surprise me if they had, like, a random choice scarf outside of Trick Room to clean up late game. Never mind. <laughs> uh, okay, maybe I should have been a bit more careful there, but I'll go Conk and... I'm just gonna be aggressive in Earthquake into Jellicent, I, I feel. I can't Mach Punch here, like... They sack off the Mimikyu, okay, good play, dude. So, the I just sacked off my Hippo for nothing. I can't believe I sacked off both the ground types, just like that. That's so funny to me, I don't know why. I can bring this in and, like, maybe try to Moonblast. I think I'll live a Hex. Like, Guard of War Spideff is good, but I'm not doing enough. That's, like, the thing. So I gotta pivot to this here and then roost it up. Maybe I can just win with Corviknight stall. Like, that might be the, the play here. Like, it, it probably wins. They try to burn me there. Now what I think I do is U-turn out this turn. Yeah, they're gonna strength step up to full. I get in guard here. I'm just gonna start thunderbolting. I don't think they're pivoting to Diggersby anymore. And every time this happens, I just go back to Corviknight. And I might be able to win by just cycling between these guys. Okay, they finally get their burn off. I'm gonna maybe try to get the kill with... So here's, I think, the play. I'm gonna Earthquake here. To chip it, and then I'm gonna get in guard the next turn. Yeah, because now they're gonna try to strength sap, right? They cannot strength sap too much health back from guard burnt. 
Yeah, it only gets like up to 65, which is really bad for them, and I can Moonblast through now. They might Hex here to knock me out, but then I think Conch plus Corviknight might do it for me. They could get up Trick Room first, though. I didn't think about that. Ugh, I might have lost. Yeah, I didn't think about Trick Room. I got a crit. They didn't click Trick Room. Okay, they might have thrown. Let's bring this in and click Earthquake, obviously. And then, like, it depends on whether Diggersby has Quick Attack, I think. If they go Digs, it definitely has Quick. So let's go Corviknight on that. And then what I can do here is... I think when they exchange, by just clicking Roost... Oh, yeah, lost. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> Didn't think about that. Should have. I mean, I don't think Brave Bird would have helped me at all. So let's go ahead and drop GG. That was that was really poorly played on my part, but it happens. I'll be right back. All right, we have Volcanion is good again. I definitely want to try to beat him again. What I can do right here is lead off with my. So last time he led Mew. I like the Mew versus Mammo lead matchup from last time, so I'll go with that again here. He might switch it up this time and go like Life Orb Gengar lead. I'm pretty sure it was Life Orb Gengar. Nasty Plot Hydra, I want to say. I don't remember actually all that well. <laughs> I can just Earthquake here, though. Last time he just stayed in. I'll just Earthquake here. He's probably going to spike again. No, he attacks this time to get me in range of Gengar. Okay, smart play. Yeah, I think I just Ice Shard for a chip then. Did it over half. <laughs> I always forget how feral this thing is. Like, it's so bad. So we know it's Life Orb. I'll go Gardevoir here. Moonblast should do 36 to a Gengar. I'm gonna double check, but... Come on now. 75 Smdef? Yeah, 37 min. So ends up being Aegislash. No drop for me this time. Let's go Corviknight. He might be really aggressive and double. He just goes for Shadow. Was it... I definitely think he went for Flash Cannon last time. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm not really scared of that. Like, I can still arrange using Rotom and whatnot. Maybe I should Brave Bird, though. I should live that. Ah, oh, never mind. I was hoping to get ship damage. So, look, here's the thing. Is it King Shield? Because if I Nasty Plot on King Shield, then that's that's really good. This might honestly be what the game comes down to, whether I can get this right. The alternative is just will o -Sping, As he doesn't risk it. Okay, good play, dude. So, he's definitely managed to put himself ahead this time around. Um, do I take the hit? No, I'm gonna go guard. It was right for Dark Pulse. Yeah, understandable. I can just go for Moonblast. At least we know it's Life Orb and I think I have to get in Hippo. And then make like a prediction maybe. Yeah, because I take two Shadow Claws. If I were them, I would switch out here like into... I'm just going to Fire Fang. I think Fire Fang is a good mid ground. Yeah, because it'll put this down to Sash. Nice. I had that killed and now they can pivot to Hydreigon if they want. Oh, never mind. I didn't have it killed. Wow. I should have Stone Edged. Adamant Choice Band can't do that much? Okay, the accuracy is horrible. I lost the game, but... Like, jeez. That's horrible accuracy. I think I lost the game, at least. There's nothing I can do, right? Yeah, I'll go Conquer for Flame Orb. They're just gonna bring out, like, Age Slash or Gengar. Age Slash. I'm just gonna take the kill. I can take that. Like, if I could live the hit from Gengar here, I could win, but I don't think I do. And then the other two just died to Sludge Wave, so yeah, there's nothing I can do, unfortunately. He's just gonna Sludge Wave. Uh, what was Life Orb? Could I have saved the game then? No, I don't think so. Well, I'll bring this in, and then, like, I'll still lose, but... Yeah, like, if this Gengar was dead, I might have been able to do it, but I'll be right back. Okay, I have another game right here. My opponent has a Frostmouth. We battled this guy earlier. He didn't have the Frostmouth last time, so it's gonna be a different game. Still no fairy resist, but Frostmouth can maybe take the hits due to ice scales. I want to lead off with my Hippo against Grim, and I can just Earthquake immediately, I feel. Really no drawback to that play. It'll do a lot to this, probably to it KO. Never mind. Although with the next sand turn, it looks like it might, so let's go for it again. And then if the Cloister comes out, what am I going to do is the question. Okay, I just killed it there, so the first one was a really low roll. What does he do now? He could go Cloister and just try to win, but like... I don't think that's gonna win when I have Corviknight and Conkeldur in the back. It would give him some openings, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I have to Earthquake, he Shell Smashes, then... I would have to sack somebody, get in Corviknight, and U-turn into Conk to get the Flame Orb activated, I think? That would be the only way I could revenge this reliably. Ends up being Frostmoth? I don't want to take an Ice Beam. 
Let's go Corviknight. Like, if he Quiver dances, it is what it is. Like, I'm pretty sure I live anything here, and your Bra Brave Bird's still gonna do a decent amount at the end of the day. So let's just go for Brave Bird. I just need to put it in range of guard, which I, I don't think it'll be, but considering ice skills, screens, and plus one. Oh, I take that actually really well. How much am I doing? 67. Maybe I do, actually. I mean, I'll just revenge using Conk, actually. Like, that's fine. Yeah, Conk Mock Punch should kill this. Maybe not without Guts, but, like, there's no way Guard is doing 21. I'm gonna put it in the Calc. Like, Guard is strong, but this thing is insanely spit F. Frostmoth. So let's say they have Light Screen up at plus 1. Okay, 20 to... well, 19 to 23. Do I go for that roll? This is 18 to 22. Am I missing a factor? Light Screen, Reflect. No, it's just Light Screen at plus 1. That's it, right? Ice skills is in here. Oh, the ability is not even ice skills yet. Oh yeah, I'm not doing any damage. Okay, yeah, I gotta go conk then and mock punch. Its defense is bad, right? Yeah, 60. There's no way it's living this. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> I'm glad I checked the ability there, so that'll help me out. I wonder who they bring in now. Like, cosmic power? Does Clef even get cosmic power this gen? I haven't seen it at all, so maybe it doesn't. Uh, they pivot drag, so I can go either, like... I could choose to just take damage and then help out guard endgame, but, like, honestly, I should be keeping this for Cloyster. Let's go Hippo. Subs up, I can Earthquake spam. Goes right for DD. I don't even think you kill me, dude. And then Earthquake's gonna kill you because I have the choice band. Yeah, that's actually so funny, and this is dead. So let's go ahead and get rid of it, and then... Yeah, they can bring out, like, Mew here, maybe. Can Rock Polish Mew win? I don't think so. Cloyster comes in. I have to obviously Earthquake into... Oh, they just take the kill. Well, that's fine. I can just go to... Guard and safely Moonblast now without really thinking about it. Can my Moonblast hit five times because I have Skill Link, please? Let's see who they bring out now. Probably, like, Mew or Clef. <laughs> Probably Mew or Clef, yeah. I think that's those are the two options. Probably Mew. Unless Clef actually has a way to revenge me, but if it's Calm Mind, it can't win, because my Facade and my Earthquake are doing way too much. And I can also just pivot Rotom and spam Nasty Plot. I want to Moonblast this just once to see what it's doing. I do a lot. It goes for DD. Okay. Can you kill me, though? Like, if I get this Moonblast off, you're in range of my priority hits, so... That's, I think, the important thing here. And also, maybe they're not even fast enough, because I'm max speed timid guard. They are, okay, but they die. And then, like, Clef, I don't think Clef can win on its own, so I'll be right back. So it looks like we'll be ending things off against a rain team with a beware. I definitely want to take advantage of Hippo lead here. So my Sandstream went up first, meaning I'm safe to Stone Edge here. They might risk this, so... Let's go for Edge, and I've killed the Pelipper? Nope. Fizz Death Pelipper, man. But I did a lot, so... That's helpful, I guess. I wish I put it in range of Hazards, but obviously I didn't. Uh, somebody's dead, I'm realizing, so... That's interesting. <laughs> Do I go Rotom? Rotom's actually not too great, despite the fact that it's against Rain, if I'm being honest. The problem is, who would I bring out after? I guess Guard, yeah. Oh, I lived, wow. So that means that's definitely Scarf, not Banded. Yeah, there's Scarf, so that forces me to go Gardevoir here. Like, Dracovish just forces me to play offensively, it looks like. What did I trace? Strongjaw? Yeah, they pivot Pharaoh. Like the thing is, do I just predict the Dracovish double? Because every time they do that, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna lose them on. They set up rocks, okay. Yeah, now they just go back to Dracovish. This is really frustrating. I'm mean, not gonna let them do it, obviously, but Um I'm just gonna focus blast into that Ferrothorn and not hit, okay. It is focus blast though, what can I say? They go Pelipper. Okay, they killed the Pelipper, so no more rain. They get in Dracovish again, and uh, this just kills, like, everything. I'm just gonna reverse their weather, I think. Yeah, then I think I get in Guard again. To just Moonblast. To keep on making the Pharaoh play. I wish I hit the Focus Blast, but obviously I can't really... I, I didn't, so there's not a lot I can do about that. Let's drain punch here. 
This is actually kind of an okay position. Oh, I crit beware, okay. Dracovish. If I can get rid of this. No, I would have had the game here with Moonblast had my Moon had my thing hit, but it's okay. What I can do is I wanna say sack off Corviknight and then get in guard one more time. Just gonna try to hit, like whatever. Okay, I did. So now it's in range of Mach Punch, which is really valuable. And I think I win with this. You don't kill me. Yeah, I get the health back, and then I'm pretty sure I'm fine here. Nice. And then, I don't know if the crit mattered, but like, obviously, had the Focus Blasted, Moonblast would have had this anyway. We'll go ahead and end things off right there. We had some scary games, but I think we did end off at 5-2. and two. The two losses were in our row, right? So we went 3-0. and oh, then minus two, then we won another two after that. So five and two, definitely solid. I think I did end up in the 1800s after all of that. So I'm definitely happy. I hope you all enjoyed and I will see you guys tomorrow. Later.